I saw the soul of innocence was in a darkened room. I was transfixed to look at this uh, spherical flask of fluid. And you look into the center, and in the center, you see a, uh, a glowing purple light, uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. Sonoluminescence is a fascinating phenomenon where sound is turned into light. It might sound like science fiction, but it's a real, well-documented process that scientists have been studying for decades. Imagine being able to make a tiny bubble in water light up with a flash just by using sound waves. That's exactly what happens with sonoluminescence, and the process behind it is both mysterious and intriguing. Sonoluminescence is a result of a series of steps that convert sound energy into light energy, and it all begins with a small gas bubble in water. Let's dive deeper into the process. To generate sonoluminescence, you first need a bubble. Scientists use intense sound waves in a liquid, typically water, to create these bubbles. Sound waves are essentially vibrations that travel through the liquid, and when they are of the right frequency and power, they cause tiny gas pockets within the water to form into bubbles. The frequency of the sound waves is key here. It has to be incredibly high, usually in the ultrasonic range, above the frequency that humans can hear. These sound waves create alternating high pressure and low pressure regions in the liquid. When the pressure drops low enough, the liquid pulls apart slightly, creating a small, spherical bubble filled with gas. Once the bubble is formed, the sound waves continue to push and pull on the liquid. This causes the bubble to expand and contract. At first, the bubble grows larger during the low pressure phase of the sound wave. But as the high pressure phase follows, the bubble collapses inward. The key to sonoluminescence lies in this rapid collapse. The bubble's size shrinks dramatically and quickly down to a fraction of its original size, compressing the gas trapped inside. The bubble doesn't simply pop. It shrinks in on itself with extreme force, creating a highly concentrated point of energy. As the bubble collapses, the gas inside is compressed to extremely high pressures and temperatures. Scientists estimate that the temperature inside the collapsing bubble may reach tens of thousands of degrees, comparable to or even hotter than the surface of the sun. The collapse happens so fast that the gas doesn't have time to escape, causing the bubble to implode violently. During this implosion, the energy from the collapse is focused into an incredibly small volume. This concentrated energy leads to the emission of a bright flash of light, lasting for just a few trillionths of a second. This flash of light is the main event of sonoluminescence. While it lasts for an incredibly short time, the light emitted is bright enough to be seen by the human eye. This is especially fascinating because the bubble itself is microscopic, often no larger than one one-hundredth of a millimeter. The light seems far too intense for such a small object, adding to the mystery of the phenomenon. The light emitted is usually in the visible spectrum, but some experiments have shown that sonoluminescence can also produce ultraviolet light. This raises interesting questions about what exactly happens during the bubble collapse. Are there plasma-like states forming? Are temperatures even higher than initially estimated? We don't know. Sonoluminescence isn't the only natural process where energy is concentrated into a small space to produce surprising results. We can compare it to the collapse of a dying star in space. When a star runs out of fuel, gravity causes it to collapse inward, concentrating all of its energy into a small space. This rapid compression can result in a supernova explosion, 
which releases an enormous amount of light and energy, much like how a collapsing bubble releases a brief but intense flash of light. While the scales are vastly different, stars are millions of times bigger than a bubble. The underlying principle of rapid compression and energy release is similar. Another real-world example that resembles sonoluminescence occurs in ship propellers. When a ship propeller moves through water at high speeds, it can create low-pressure areas that cause cavitation, tiny bubbles form, and then rapidly collapse. While these collapsing bubbles don't emit light, they release a tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat and sound. In fact, cavitation is powerful enough to damage metal propellers over time, a phenomenon similar to how the collapse of bubbles in sonoluminescence can generate extreme conditions. The exact reason why the bubble lights up is still not fully understood, and that's what makes sonoluminescence so mysterious. However, scientists have a few ideas. For example, when the bubble collapses, the gas inside gets squeezed incredibly tight. This squeezing generates temperatures that are thought to be as hot as the surface of the sun, or even hotter. Some scientists believe that the light comes from the heat created during this compression, which could make the gas inside the bubble glow. Another theory is that the collapse of the bubble creates plasma, which is a superheated state of matter. Plasma can emit light, and this might be another reason why the bubble shines. Sonoluminescence is something that could have big implications for science and technology. The conditions inside the collapsing bubble are extreme, with high pressures and temperatures. Studying sonoluminescence helps scientists learn more about how matter behaves in such environments, which could lead to discoveries in physics and chemistry. Some researchers wonder if the extreme conditions of sonoluminescence could eventually be used to generate energy, similar to nuclear fusion. If we could harness the power created during the bubble's collapse, it might offer a new way to produce energy. Although we don't fully understand it yet, research into this phenomenon is ongoing and could lead to breakthroughs in science and technology. Thanks for staying with us once again.